Hey folks, well, last time we looked at playing with pointers and memory addresses and how memory is laid out a little bit. And right at the end, we mentioned that we could have our program request specific amounts of memory and specific types of memory as it ran. And we said that this memory is allocated from some storage area that we refer to as the heap. So what will happen is our program will request memory that request, hopefully, will get granted and will be given the address where the, the new memory space exists. We'll be given a pointer to the space that we were just granted. So the way this comes up is that quite often in a program, you don't know how much space you're going to need until the program is already running. You know, you ask the user, how many values do you want to enter? And then you allocate an array of that size. Maybe the user says we want to enter, you know, 100 doubles. Maybe they say they want to enter 5,000 doubles. Maybe they say they want to enter 5 doubles. But we don't know that until it runs. So we can't, when we're writing the program, we can't actually hard code an array to size 1,000 or 5,000 or something like that because it might not be big enough. The user might actually need more than that. And if we allocate something really big, you know, just in case they ask for something really big, then most of the time we're wasting a huge amount of memory because you know we've created an array of size 100,000 when the user only wants five. So what we would like to be able to do is wait until the program is running, ask the user in some way or determine in some way how much space we're going to need this time, and then allocate the space and use it. And once we're done, we can free up that space again and say, okay, you know, especially if it's a, a big chunk of memory or if we're doing lots of these allocations, we want to make sure that as soon as possible, we can say, all right, I'm done with this now. You can have it back. And maybe that space will be allocated again to the program for a different purpose later on. So this is the, the idea of dynamic memory allocation. We figure out on the fly, dynamically, when the how much space is needed and when. We request it, and then we free it up when we're done with it. Now. For the beginning, we're just going to focus on dynamic allocation of arrays. In another session, we'll get into dynamic allocation of other uh, possibly even more interesting elements. So this notion that, um, you know, I want an array, but I don't know how big an array until the program's actually running. So sometime as the program runs, we figure out what the right size is for this run. Again, maybe you ask the user, maybe you compute it some other way. But we figure out what size we're actually going to need we put in a request for you know that many ints or that many floats or whatever the data type is, and we're given back a pointer to where that's located. Now, as we saw last time, pointers and arrays are pretty much interchangeable. So once we're given the pointer, we can use it as if it was an array. So we can have a play with it that way. And again, once we're finished with it, once we no longer need the array at all, we deallocate it, free it up again so that that space can be reused. And okay, recycling here. So the syntax is through an operator that's called new. So in this example, I'm going to ask the user um, how many elements they want. What's the desired array size? And I'm going to create an array of doubles. So the user says 5 or 50 or 500 or 5,000. And then we're going to try and allocate an array of that size. So the syntax is new is the name of the operator. So again, that's one of the built-in operators what kind of array you want. So I want an array of doubles. And then how big, so whatever the size is. And again, what that's going to give back is a pointer. So my array needs to be a pointer to doubles. So this is, and it's, again, essentially what it's giving back is the address of the first element of this newly allocated space. So if I ask for 50 doubles, it's going to allocate space for 50 doubles, give me back the address of the first one, and I'm storing that. Now, it's possible that I use a bad size. You know, I use a negative number as the size, in which case this is, is going to fail. It can't allocate a negative amount of space. So it's possible that this could actually fail because I gave it a bad value. It's also possible that either my size requested was really big or the amount of memory that's still available is really small. So it's possible that there's not enough available memory to satisfy the request. So every time I do something like this, every time I use new to request space, the first thing I'm going to do afterwards is check if it worked or not. 
if it failed, it's going to give me back zero as the memory address. So if you recall way back when, I mentioned that memory addresses start at one and go up from there. So zero is kind of a, a tag for not a valid memory address. So we're going to use this null value or zero all the time as a way of testing if a pointer currently has a valid memory address. So if it came back with a value of null, it didn't work. So I'm going to print out, you know, not enough memory or bad size or something along those lines. Otherwise, the memory allocation succeeded, so I can go ahead and use it. And then once I'm done, I'm going to delete it. So the delete syntax is the keyword delete. And then the open and close square brackets, just empty. And then the name of the pointer that refers to this array. So this is the syntax for deleting an array of things that I've created dynamically. So if I set it up using new, then I want to delete it using this syntax at the end. Now in between, I can go ahead and use it just like I would any other array. So if I wanted to go through and read in a bunch of elements and print them out again, right? So here I'm just going to go through and say, okay, well, from zero to size minus one, you know, get the user to read in a value and I'm putting it in array element i. So again, I can use, so I can use this pointer just as if it was a regular array now that I know that the space was actually allocated. If, uh, if I forgot to do my null pointer check and the new had actually failed, then my program would crash when I tried this because I'd be trying to put things into an invalid memory location. So this is the idea for allocating memory on the fly as the program runs and then for deleting it when I'm done with it. So again, new returns null if it can't fulfill the request. Um, either a bad, typically either a bad size or not enough memories available. And again, null indicates that the memory address is not usable, it's not valid. Always check for null after you make a, a request for new. And again, once you're done, remember to deallocate the memory that you allocated with new. So again, that's delete the square brackets and whatever your pointer name is. Now, we can get functions to return the pointers as well. So I can set up something a little differently here and let's have a function where we pass it the size, it's going to allocate an array and then it's going to return the address of that array. So I'm going to have this function do the, the allocation and memory checking for me and just give me back a pointer at the end. So this time in my main routine, I'm going to do the same sort of thing, right? Ask the user, what size do you want? And I'll read it in and then I'm going to call allocate array and I'm going to capture whatever it gives back. So it's going to go off and allocate it and give me back the pointer. So in this case, in the array, it's telling, you know, the users pass the size that they want. And so I'm going to go through and try and allocate an array. And this is just exactly the same syntax as I used before, All right? I'll create a, an int. So we're creating an array of ints this time. So we'll create an int pointer. So int star and my, whatever my variable name is, and I want to create an array of ints, so it's new int of whatever the size is. And again, if it didn't work, if it comes back with a null, I can say there wasn't enough memory. Here I'm throwing in an extra test at the beginning to say, well, size better be greater than zero. If size is zero or less, it's invalid. So I'm not even going to try and call new on an invalid size. So if size is greater than zero, I'll try and allocate it and see if it worked. If size was zero or less, then I'll just give the user, you know, that wasn't a valid size. And then once this is all done, I'll return the pointer no matter what. So I'm going to return either null because they gave me something invalid or it didn't work, or I'm returning the actual address that new gave me. So in the main routine, I'm getting back the address of the space that I was given or null if it didn't work. So again, in my main routine now, I can go ahead and use the array normally and delete it when I'm done. So we can get our functions to return pointers now. All right, we can also pass pointers by reference. So I can pass a pointer to a function and have that function fill in the new value for the pointer. So we'll give that a try as well. Now the syntax for this one is a little important. So if I'm passing a pointer to an int, so let's say I want it to allocate space for an array of integers, you do your int star, so the data type, and then the fact that you want it passed by reference. So it's the int star and then the ampersand. 
and your parameter name. So that is how you pass a pointer by reference. Now within, we're doing pretty much the same thing. We're going to get this to return true if it works and false if it doesn't. So if the size is greater than zero, I'm going to try my usual new int size. And if it isn't, then I'm just simply going to set the pointer to null because there's no point in, in trying to, to allocate a, you know, a negative size or a zero size. And after that, you know, either this succeeded or failed. And so I'll just check if the array is null, didn't work, I'll return false. And otherwise it did work, I'll return true. So in my main routine, I'm setting up the pointer for my array. I'm going to start it off as null just to be safe. I'm going to have a variable for my size. I'll get the size from the user. And then I'll call allocate and I'll say, here, here's my pointer. Please fill it in. And here's the size I want. And if it returns true, right, so I'm doing my if, you know, call the function. If the function returns true, it worked. So I'm going to go ahead and use my array just normally. And then when I'm done, I'll delete it. So again, all sorts of different things we can do with this. We can pass these things by, we can pass a pointer regularly, we can pass it by reference, we can have a function return a pointer. It all works. It's just a matter of playing with the syntax to make sure you get the syntax right. Uh, let's hold off on looking at the 2D arrays for a second here. And let's just play with a bit of an example. So again, just some sample code to look at pretty much exactly what we were just doing. So if we look at my dynamic allocation here. So I'm going to go through once and just do it all directly in the main routine. So in this first one, I'm going to set up a pointer, so an int star. So this can be the my array of ints if it eventually works and a variable to keep track of how many. I'll ask the user how many they want, read it in, and then I'll try and allocate an array of that many ints. Afterwards, I'll check and see if it worked. And if it did work, then I can say, okay, you know, you allocated or I allocated an array of this many ints and we'll spit out the, the memory address so we can see where this stuff is getting created. And then again, you can go through and use the array absolutely normally. Then I'm going to do the same thing for doubles, but I'm going to use this allocation function that I'm going to write that returns a pointer to the array of doubles that it allocates. So for this one, We'll go through, ask the user how many they want, you know, read it in, and then we'll call my allocation function and pass it the number of, in, of doubles that I want, and it's going to return the pointer. And again, I can check that. If it's not null, then it worked, and I can go ahead and use the array normally. And again, we'll go through and we'll print out, you know, we created an array of this many doubles at this address. So we'll display that. And again, I can go through and use the array, use that pointer as if it was an array, right? Because again, they're nearly interchangeable as far as we're concerned. All right, and then we'll try one more time with uh, passing the pointer by reference to our function. So this time I'm gonna ask the user how many floats they want. Um, I'll read that in and I'll try and allocate an array of floats. So I'm gonna call my other allocation routine. I'm gonna pass it my pointer by reference and pass it the number of floats I want and I'm gonna see if it returns true or false. And if it returns true, I can go ahead and use the array normally. And then down at the end, again, we always want to make sure that we delete the space that we allocated. So for each of them, I'm going to test if it worked or not. And if it worked, you know, if, if space is actually allocated to this pointer, I'm going to go through and delete it. Now, we could say if int array is equal to null. Um, so that's saying if, you know, int array is equal to zero, which is actually the equivalent of saying if int array is equal to false. Anyway, the, uh, since any non-zero value evaluates to true, as far as logic is, as far as Boolean logic is concerned, I can simply say if, and then the pointer name. And this is saying, basically saying is if this pointer is anything but null, let's use it. Or it's got space allocated to it, so we'll delete it. So this is another way of testing for, you know, null pointers or not null pointers. So. If int array is basically saying if it's not null, delete it. And then we'll just do the same thing with all three of them. So this is, again, we want to make sure that we don't try and delete something that's actually null. But if they've got space associated with them, we'll go through and we'll try and delete them. 
And then again, as far as the content goes, our allocation routine, the first one was going to return the pointer. So we're just allocating a little local pointer to a double here. If the size is bad, we're just going to return a null. But if the size looks OK, then we'll try the allocation. We'll try a new double size, store it in our pointer, and then we'll return it. And then the pass by reference version, again, we're saying you're going to pass a pointer to a float. This time was for creating an array of floats. We're going to pass it by reference. And you know, you're going to tell me how many you want. And again, if the size is bad, I'll just set this to null and return false. Otherwise, if the size is good, I'll try new to allocate my array. And then I'm going to return either true or false if it worked or didn't. So if the array is null at this point, it didn't work one way or the other. So I'll return false. And otherwise, I go through and return true. So I can set up um, my dynamic allocation routines for pass by reference or to return a pointer. You know, any way you like, you can manage to work it out. So let's give this a try. So the first one was asking how many ints. Let's say, I don't know, I want 12 ints. And the allocation succeeded. And it tells me what the memory address was. You know, it asks me how many doubles. Maybe I say five. And it allocates an array. And we can see the address that it was located at. And you know, how many floats would you like? I want 30. And again, it tells me the address it was located at. So I can see where this stuff is getting located in memory. And again, this went through and all it did was set zeros in all the array elements, but it gets to the end and checks whether these things actually exist or not. And since all three do exist, it goes through and deletes each of the three arrays. You know, if I was to try it, and again, let's try 50 ints, and let's try negative five doubles, and it should tell me um, it's not hopefully not allocating space so we shouldn't see the doubles deleted at the end if uh, if i got this right and again let's try i don't know 10 for the, the number of floats and again we can see that it did manage to allocate the first and last arrays but it didn't allocate the doubles because it was a bad size uh, if we wanted to try something i don't know let's try something crazy for our number of ints and oh, <laughs> okay, this got actually too carried away here. Okay, well, grand glorious crash. But uh, um, we can go through and play with our allocation routines here and see how they, oh, right, because uh, I was actually trying to allocate too much space here. Okay. So we can go through and allocate space on the fly, check if things succeed or not, right? Pass pointers by reference return pointers from a function, all of this will work, and it is all fairly handy. All right, where did I want to go? So we were going to get into the 2D arrays next. That was the, the next idea. So this is something that gets a little bit more intricate because for a 2D array, we're essentially going to represent each row of the array as a pointer and then we need, effectively, this acts like an array of rows, and each row is an array of columns. So we've kind of got two one-dimensional arrays going on here. So each, each row element will be a pointer to wherever that row of columns gets allocated. So the way this winds up working out is we'll go through and first allocate a bunch of pointers for the individual rows, and then for each row, we'll go through and allocate an array of pointers for the columns in that row. So my two-dimensional array is actually of type star star. A pointer to a pointer, which is effectively an array of arrays, if you like. And so we're going to go through and allocate this piece by piece. So first we go through and find out how many rows we want. So let's say we get the user to enter the rows and they say, you know, five rows and ten columns. And then we're going to say each row is going to be represented by a pointer, right? A, a, if it's going to be an array of floats, then it's a float star. So we'll allocate an array of float pointers that will point to each of the individual columns. And of course, that could fail, so we'll test. And if it failed, we'll bail out right now. 
Otherwise, we can go through and try and allocate an array of floats for each individual row. So we'll go through each row, and that row will consist of a pointer to an array of floats for our for each of the individual columns. Right? So we figure out how many columns and create an array of that many floats. So we go through and allocate the rows and then go through and allocate one by one the array for each of those rows. The row pointers I like, I guess you'd like. And then the uh, the actual arrays for each individual row. So it does get a little weirder. Once you've done that, you can use it like a regular two-dimensional array. So if our pointer isn't null, then we'll go through and use each of them normally. When the time comes to deallocate it, again, we want to make sure that we go through and deallocate each of the things that we've allocated. But we've got to go through those individual rows first and delete them, and then we can delete our row of, our, our row of float pointers. So we can go through for each of the rows, delete that row, right, if it isn't already null. And then once we're done with that, we can delete the row pointers. So if you want to play with two-dimensional arrays allocated dynamically, this is the way to do it. It's not something we're going to play with um, this term, but I did want you to see it so that you can experiment with this if you're interested. Uh, what we're going to get into next that gets extremely interesting is the idea of using our dynamic allocation to create data structures that can grow and shrink over time. So we call these dynamic data structures, and this is an extremely useful feature for us. The idea is if I've got some kind of data collection where I want to be able to incrementally add to it over time and incrementally take away pieces over time, then we would like something that can allow us to do that. And again, pointers and dynamic allocation, pointers, new and delete, are going to come into play for all of this. So let's say we've got you know, a ticket sales um, program where we're going through and letting people uh, request tickets. And so we've got something that's reading in their requests and you know, entering them into our program, and then we've got something else in the program that's pulling out requests and dealing with them. So you know, actually servicing the request, if you like. So we've got all these requests coming in, and we're processing them as fast as we can. Now, most of the time, our processor can probably keep up with the incoming requests. But suppose we get a big spike in sales all of a sudden, you know, some something new drops at, at 9 a.m. and so all of a sudden we get just a billion requests coming in really fast. So it might be the case that the part of the routine that's pulling and servicing the requests can't keep up with the number that are getting added to our the number that are coming in. And so maybe we create this queue of requests and most of the time it's pretty small, right? We're pretty much keeping up with requests as they come in, but every once in a while it spikes and grows really big. So what we might want to do is create some kind of a data structure where with each new request, I can request space for just that one request and glue it onto the end of this queue, glue it onto the end of this, this structure. And then as I'm servicing them, I can pull out the front one and do something with it and throw it away. And pull out the next one and do something with it and throw it away. So we're going to be going through this process of adding new things at the back and pulling new things off the front, doing something with them, and then deleting them. So this is the notion of a dynamic data structure. It grows and shrinks. We can add things to it and remove things from it. Now, we'll, we'll have a, a fair bit of a, a play with our dynamic data structures. It's going to be a big part of our focus for, for well, <laughs> most of the rest of this course and the next course. But uh, I did want to bring up some of the problems that are now going to face us as we're playing with pointers. Now, some of the, the common mistakes that we can make. Sometimes we can forget to put a value in a pointer variable, and then we try and use it as if it's an array, or try and use it if it's point, as if it's pointing to something useful. So we have no idea what value is actually in that variable. It could be pointing anywhere in memory. So we call these wild pointers, 
and they can have all sorts of bizarre side effects. You know, again, since it can be pointing into memory, it could be pointing at you know some other piece of data that we're that we're using. It can be pointing at you know a piece of memory that we're not actually using right now, so it doesn't wind up having any effect that we can see. Uh, it can wind up you know pointing somewhere at the the code that we're using, the executable portion. It could point anywhere. So the request the the effect of these things are really unpredictable. Uh, null pointers, these we've addressed a little bit. If I've got a pointer that has a value of null and I try and use it as if it's a valid memory address, I'm going to get a crash because again, zero isn't a valid memory address. If I try and read what's in memory at that address or if I try and write into memory at that address, I'm going to get a crash. So forgetting to check for nulls is another uh, common problem. Dangling pointers are an interesting one. So we can use new to request memory and do something with it and then free it up when we're done. But that the pointer variable is still pointing where the space is. You know, if I allocate something, put it in my array pointer, delete the space later, the array pointer is still pointing at, at that old location, even though I'm not using that memory anymore. If I accidentally use the pointer to try and access memory at that location, who knows what might be there now. It might not be in use for anything. It might be getting used for something else. So dangling pointers are another issue. Memory leaks are yet another one where you allocate memory using new, but you forget to delete it. And so if your program trundles happily along and you keep doing this, you're gradually sucking up more and more memory without freeing it up. And if this goes on long enough, or if the requests are big enough, you can get a crash because you wind up out of memory. So these are all issues that we're going to have to deal with. So in terms of just a few examples, you know, I create an, a pointer variable. I don't initialize it, so it could have anything in it. And then I try and copy what's in memory there into some other variable. Again, who knows where this thing is pointing? Right, so that's the idea of a wild pointer. Null pointers. I go through and I've got some pointer that actually has the value null in it right now. And I try and do something with it. I try and access memory through it or I try and delete it. Again, I'm going to wind up with a crash. It's not a valid memory address. It's not a usable memory address. Um, and again, so if I try and dereference a null pointer, if I try and look in memory at that location, I'm going to get a crash. The dangling pointer idea, right? I, I allocate an array using new, I delete it later on, and then sometime after that, I try and use the pointer anyway. Again, this memory space, I, I've told the system that I'm no longer using that memory, do what you want with it, and then later on I'm trying to use it anyways. Well, if the system has actually used that memory for something else in between, then who knows what kind of result I'm going to get, who knows what I'm going to print out. Now, this might appear to work if I'm lucky and if the system hasn't actually done anything with that memory space since I deleted it. Right? So I might get away with it, I might not. Again, memory leaks are the idea that I allocate some memory and then I never delete it. One of the ways that can happen is if I change that pointer before I delete. You know, so if I set that pointer to null, I've got no way of getting at that memory that I allocated because I've got no recollection of where it is. Right? The only thing that kept track of where it was, I've changed. So we can wind up with memory leaks in all sorts of interesting ways. Again, if you've ever had a game that uh, you left running, if you leave it running long enough, sooner or later it crashes, quite often that's due to a problem like this where it's over time allocating space and allocating space and allocating space, and there's something that it's not deleting, something that it's not deallocating. So it gradually just chews up more and more and more space over time. It might be very small amounts, but you know, cumulatively, eventually this mounts up. So again, memory leaks are a, a significant issue. All right, where we're gonna go in the next little while, aside from having to debug all our pointer problems, is this idea of dynamic data structures looking at different kinds of data structure we can create and uh, what we can do with it. So we'll talk about linked lists and we'll talk about trees. 
I think we'll probably only do an implementation of linked lists, but uh, we'll get into the da dynamic data structures more in subsequent courses as well. All right, that is a good place to leave it for now.